Hi. In this part, we will talk about scorecard properties and quality assessment. Let's recall what the scorecard is. The scorecard can be presented as a table with a number of characteristics and points for each of them. It has been built automatically by Plugin Score Modeler using a logistic regression approach. After the auto scaling procedure has been performed, the resulting weights of borrower's characteristics become points of the scorecard. However, sometimes we need to adjust scorecard points manually to renew the logical trend of variables. Let's consider the job time variable. Here we manually assign the value 100. The value assigned should be within a range of 79 to 110. The more experience, the more points. Let's have a look at the score points distribution histogram here. To ensure a good classification, the quality distribution should be wide enough because closely grouped values will not allow us to classify the borrowers well enough. In addition, the distribution tends to be hill-like. The most common characteristics of the model are the rock curve and the Gini coefficient. Rock stands for Receiver Operating Characteristic. The rock curve is a plot of the true positive rate against the false negative rate. The higher the curve, the larger the indicator, and the better the scorecard. The Gini value for the training and validation subsets is presented here. If C is the area under the rock curve, the Gini value equals 2 times C minus 1. If the Gini value is greater than 0.6, as in this particular case, the model is considered to be a very good classifier. The most commonly used characteristic in describing the quality of the model, scoring function, is the Kolmogorov Smirnov statistic, KS. The Kolmogorov Smirnov curve shows the difference between the distribution of goods and bads. The KS statistic is a maximum value of this difference. Thus, the higher the Kolmogorov Smirnov statistic, the better the model. Now, let's have a look at the important graph, which shows good and bad distributions. A red graph displays distribution of bads, while a green graph displays distribution of goods. A good classification result is achieved when a range between mean values and upper values of the graph displaying good and bad distributions is as wide as possible. Let's consider the risk segments chart. The correct risk distribution involves a monotonous increase in the odds of the good outcome. Only such distributions allow formulating rules for working with borrowers based on their score or for using risk-based pricing. Now let's have a look at the classification matrices. We see that 84% of BADs are correctly classified. That means that only one of seven BADs will be classified incorrectly. So we can conclude that this scorecard is quite precise. Let's look at the training and validation subsets separately. Training and validation. We see that classification correctness, error matrix, changed insufficiently. It means that the scorecard is not only a good classifier, but also a stable classifier. This indicates that the scorecard will properly classify not only the data of existing clients, but also the data of prospective clients. So the scorecard is both good and stable classifier. We can check the similarity of characteristics for the training, validation, and total subsets on the classification statistics subtab. In the next part, we will talk about the cutoff point and risk issues. If you have any questions, please contact us at contacts at pluginscore.com or on pluginscore.com or by the phone on your screen. Thank you for your attention.